All right, beautiful people. We are back with the Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. And I'm super excited to have another episode sponsored mm-hmm. by Vonza and All in One Course Platform. You are here so you get a 14 day free trial. Make sure you click on the link below this episode so that you can start working with Vonza. Get your courses created, get your courses sold and start marketing your online courses so you can have some passive income. All right, we are here. I'm super excited because we're here with Jalen Jones. And Jalen Jones, um, we're here to talk about the evolution of Jalen Jones. She's been in our community. She's built her business, built her brand. And girl, her brand's a big deal. So I'm going to actually let her introduce herself. So Jalen, the floor is yours. Welcome to the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. I am Jalen. Coach Jalen is what the internet streets call me. I am the founder of Black Pretty and Paid. Um, I support fierce female founders who desire to be the talent in their business, allow my agency to handle the rest, their sales, their marketing, their lead generation activities. That's what we do. So that's what she does now. I want to talk about where, let's talk about where you started. You Mm. started this business essentially in the pandemic Mm -hmm. and let's start there. And we taught and we bonded and connected over online courses. Yes. So I want to start there and you were still at your job. So yes, let's, let's take it back. Yes. So let's let's take it back back to 2020. I was year five in entrepreneurship, but I always operated more like a side hustle, even though I didn't realize it. Um, I always thought I was, my brand was a big deal. But I wasn't backing that up with activity, with motion, with a succession plan to actually leave my job until I finally my back was against the wall and I felt like I had to do something. But when I met you and I met your brand, I met you through an ad in a master class that you were hosting. And I pretty much built this company named Black Pretty and Paid. And I don't know if you know this part of the story, but I actually started Black Pretty and Paid because I again, used to do side hustles. And I found this company that did direct sales. They were selling lipstick. I don't know if you Mm -mm. know that part, but they were selling lipstick. It was a black owned company that was selling lipstick. And this whole company was full of, you know, reps or ambassadors that did direct selling. And these were all black women. And I just noticed this huge issue with them not knowing how to sell. You know, um, a lot of times in MLMs, you're given a great product per se, and you're giving specific strategies to do this. But a lot of the times they exhaust your network. They, you know, exhaust the close people that you know, and you really don't have true strategy on how to expand or how to make this your own thing. So um, I named the company Black Pretty and Paid. And the goal was to teach women how to sell, to teach them about business. And so when I first started, I pretty much was like, like a kitchen sink. You know, I wanted to get it all in. I wanted to help you with business acumen. I wanted to help you with your sales. I wanted to help you with your marketing. And most of the women I were working with were starting businesses or they were just brand new in what they were doing. It wasn't until I was able to rise that I started working with women under and over six figures. So I would definitely say where I started, I started where most people start thinking that that we had this in common. I thought that I had to work with millennials because I was a millennial. I thought that I had to work with people who were starting because people who have been in the game for 20 plus years aren't going to pay someone who's just starting, you know, a company. And so I had all these limiting beliefs that I had to overcome over the past three years to now double down on I was in corporate doing sales, marketing and business development. So if I know anything, I know sales, marketing and business development. So it gets easier when we decide that I can do the one thing I was called to do versus trying to cover everything. So getting clear. So I want to talk about how did you make that decision to just decide I'm just going to be me and I don't have to work with millennials because I'm a millennial. I don't have to work with businesses that are starting because Mm -hmm. I'm just starting because I get that those conversations a lot from people who are starting out in their Mm -hmm. businesses. Mm -hmm. What made you just say, girl, I'm just deciding to do something different. It is. It, it's been a it had been a battle. It really had been a battle because like my shirt says, the revolution is economic. I have been very passionate about helping black women 
specifically. And so I'm understanding the statistics around being a black woman in business and that the average black woman owned business only makes like less than $24,000 a year. You know, so I'm thinking, okay, well, I got to figure out some type of way to serve this group of people specifically in this way. But just because let's let's keep it real. Statistics cover millions, millions, probably even billions of people. Right. And so there are still even if you're looking at a one percent subset, the one percent of those black women who cross the million dollar mark and do it over and over again, the the less than seven percent that make six figures and do it over and over again. There's still a, a, a millions of women there, thousands of women there, hundreds of women there that are still waiting to be served. And so I had to make a decision. And my decision was you keep saying that you want to be a millionaire. However, you're not solving multi-million dollar problems. So you, you know, and there's more than one way to do this. The late and great CC, the six figure chick, she sold low ticket offers and created a multi-million dollar business. And she did it with excellence, excellence. But she also was a masterful at content. She passed, God rest her soul, with years of content ready to be posted. So if, you know, you're going to sell a a lower ticket product, you still have to have a high ticket strategy, you know, in which she mastered. And so I had to make a decision. What what is the way that I want to do this? Because there's no right or wrong way. Business is not, you know, rocket science, but you do have to find your formula. And I had to figure out what my formula was and my formula and what felt like ease to me is solving bigger problems. Solve yeah. bigger problems. Shout out to Cece. I was just recently on her Instagram page. Wow. She is just phenomenal. And I'm just going to put it out there. We're going to interview her family member one day. Yes. About yes. the legacy that she left. Absolutely. Because um, her work it was just so powerful. And she was a good person. You know, we meet people on the internet all the time. And sometimes you vibe and sometimes you don't. And we've never met in person, but she was definitely someone who was impactful Mm -hmm. and she left space. She collaborated and connected with people online. So let's talk about that a little bit, because, you know, the Internet can be vicious. Yes, it is. Okay, It's (laughs) viral. You just never know. The Internet can be very vicious. How have you been able to make connections Mm. online? God has been really good to me, too. I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm 30, by the way. Like, I, and I know that that's not super young, but baby, I'm gonna ride this this little young train out. And I am 30. I am in an industry where my competitor is 15 to 30 years my senior. OK, and I don't I, I'm learning. I'm learning as an expert. I'm an expert student if you will. So I make mistakes. I have hiccups and some things aren't mistakes. They're intentional. And then you realize, Hey, this wasn't the right way to do this. And so I'm honored to utilize my platform also to be transparent about where I am, who I am, you know, what it really looks like so that, you know, it's kind of like um, Eminem when he was battle rapping and he already knew that if anybody knew anything about his life or his story or the way he lived, that they could like knock him out in any battle rap just by saying these little things. So what he did, his strategy was, I'm going to tell you the thing. So it, it comes from the horse's mouth. So I think when it comes to the internet, there's a level of transparency that's required when you're operating a big brand, that's a big deal, and it's a personal brand, okay? So you'd never want that anyone to have, you know, a leg up on you because you haven't been honest, transparent and genuine. So I think that is the first way to build genuine connections because real recognizes real. Mm-hmm. People feel that no matter how how your journey is going to go. You know, people look at me three years in the game. They see I'm doing well, but they also know I have a f- way far, a far to go, especially if they've been doing this for 10 plus years. Mm-hmm. So there's grace that's given. You know, there's grace that's given when you're when you're growing. So I think the best way to grow connections is to be genuine, to be transparent, but also like I always tell people to know your three 
your three key parts of your story so that if at any given time you do have to be transparent, you can re resort to your three things that you do feel comfortable sharing instead of feeling like you have to put your entire life out, you know, for the world to see if you will. Turning your knowledge into revenue is supposed to be a seamless experience, but you're stuck dealing with messy tech and the frustrations of tying multiple tools together just to create and sell online. Using multiple platforms to run one business wastes a lot of time and money. With Fonza, simplify your online business and delight your customers. One platform to run your business effectively. Start your free trial now at Vonza.com. The best all-in-one business platform. What are these three stories? We want to know. Curious. So I tell people um, to do a breakdown, breakup, and breakthrough. Mm. So, you know, to connect with people. So breakdown. Breakdown could be the day I called my mom and was boohoo crying on the phone. Like, mom, I'm tired of this job. I'm ready to quit. Right. And that day I called her, I was actually in trouble with HR because I was working remotely in 2020 due to the pandemic and my black pretty and paid signature loaded. I used I used to use Y stamp signature and it loaded on my Outlook email mm. and I sent the email out and my black pretty and paid signature went to the company. So now they're looking up my website. Now they're looking up my Instagram and they're seeing posts during work hours and they're seeing different things or they're seeing my, they didn't even see posts. They saw my schedule on Acuity and said, you have times available during your work day. Like, tell us about this. And it was just like, I never want to work for anywhere where you can't have autonomy of your time to build your own legacy. Mm. So that was the breakdown when I had to call my mom and say, I don't know how we're going to do this, mom. I didn't have no big old savings. I had a few thousands in my 401k and that's how I left my job um, in 2021. Right. So that was my breakdown. My breakup recently, actually, me and my four year relationship ended up breaking up. I started this business with that man. He didn't start it for me, but he was <laughs> with me. <laughs> and also I made my first six figures as a business owner in that relationship. I got my first six figure career in that relationship. So there's a lot of memories and highs and lows attached to that. So that breakup is relatable to people. I actually st stood up at a speaking engagement and told everyone in the room that I knew at that speaking engagement, me and my boyfriend would break up. A year later, we ended up breaking up, you know, breakthrough. That breakthrough could be that moment where you finally get to the six figure mark and then you sabotage it because you don't know how to celebrate yourself. Ooh, mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like that's transparency. And I'm I'm being honest. I'm being genuine, but I'm not airing out all my dirty laundry. So we have to learn how to give people our three and pull them into any situation, whether you're on a stage, whether you're speaking on a sales call, whether you're doing your content, pull your three in, your breakdown, your breakup and your breakthrough. And you'll always be able to connect with other people with that. Ooh, that was good. You know, you might have to watch that again. <laughs> we got, you know, breakdowns. Breakups and breakthroughs. I want to talk about this break up. Mm, uh, mm, you know, uh, let's, let's be a little juicy today. <laughs> so you said that you knew on the stage mm -hmm. at an event that it was time to release someone to their destiny. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, transition. If someone's in that process, because because we, we're, we're both single at the time of this recording. Yes. But that could change. Hey, husband, I know you're out there, baby. It could baby. change, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> you gotta put yourself out there. You just never know. <laughs> we're both single and we've definitely had these conversations behind the scenes and definitely off camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you know it was time for that transition? Because maybe someone else is watching this mm. and they know that they want to evolve and elevate. And maybe some of the people or the person that they maybe thought they were going to spend forever with is not that person. So mm. how did you have that courage to leave? And, you know, on? I always talk about this with my friends and also my clients who are constantly checking on me because it's fresh. It was less than a year ago that we broke up and everybody knows I, I love this man. OK. And so the truth is, I didn't have the courage. I think God uh, the same way he backed me up against the wall when it was time for me to quit that job. He backed me up against the wall when it was time for me to go to the next level. And literally 
the breakup happened over something super small. There's way bigger things that we went through that could have easily ended our relationship. Right. And those things didn't. It just was a day where I just had a moment, you know, and I just say, you know what? Nah, today's the day. And that was the day. And actually that day was a day I was in the middle of a three day challenge that I do at the end of the year. And um, I just felt unsupported. I felt like, you know, I'm over here cooking, cleaning, trying to do a challenge, running a launch, running a household. And I just said, this cannot be my life. I cannot be powerful in these internet streets and operating low vibrationally in my home. There's no possible way I'm gonna live this lie. Mm. So, you know, I just had a moment and, and actually the day he left, the next day, I closed out that quarter with six figures in new business you know so it's, it's just like when you when you're obedient to the voice of God and that's what I had to realize is it, whether you know something changes in the future or not that's none of my business what is my business is the decision I was told to make right then and right there it's very uncomfortable and so you'll know you typically know farther before you you do. And if I had advice for anyone who's going through a similar situation, when you feel that first initial feeling, I genuinely recommend you to follow it as soon as possible, because I felt that feeling nearly two years before that moment. And then the next year I'm at the event and that event I was at, I felt unsupported in that day, in that moment. So it's like all the all of these reminders of saying, hey, I've already told you this. I've already told you this. When are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? God is not always going to have that level of grace with us. And honestly, we shouldn't want to prolong our 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 destiny. Who's to say that my six figure quarter couldn't couldn't have been two years before? If I would have been more obedient, mm. you know, so it's it's really just a matter of you being in tune and knowing and then doing in the same action instead of prolonging based off of what we want to do. I love it. Yeah. So I want to transition into the breakthrough. Yeah. Because you talked about six figure years. You've mentioned six figure quarters, mm -hmm. but you've also had six figure clients. Yes. So what was that transition like for you? Uh, it was it honestly it, it 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 has been what I wouldn't have imagined and what I mean by that is I personally believe that the, when, the moment you have six figures you're rich <laughs> and the moment you have a six figure quarter oh it's up from there and the moment you close a six figure client I mean you got to call the assistant now you can't talk to me anymore <laughs> but the truth was the day um that I, I closed my first six figure contract in March and um Honestly, I froze after that. I had my lowest revenue months from May to August. From May to August, I had the lowest revenue generating months I've ever had since, you know, I've been having consistent reoccurring revenue in the past three years. And it was not anything but a decision. It wasn't because business is slow because business ain't never slow. As, as a salesperson, we know how to go get our business. So I can't control how much is happening based off of the volume of my energy and how much I'm out there doing. But I literally stopped in my tracks. I I just felt unusual in terms of creating something this big. And also, when you are looking at social media, you start to compare yourself as well. Even if you're saying, oh, I don't compare. We all do it. I mean, we all it's a it's a, a psychological human trait that we begin to, you know, compare ourselves. And so I'm seeing I'm closing a six figure contract. Somebody else may be doing a million dollar contract or someone that may have closed their six figure contract paid in cash, whereas I closed my six figure contract on a certain retainer term. Right. So, you know, people will degrade you because you didn't do it in the way that they say. Also, it wasn't a six figure month if you didn't close it all at the same time. So you go through these things with your competitors and your colleagues and your mental state where you're trying to figure out if it's if you're worthy of being celebrated. And that is what I experienced. So it was it was it took me a mutual mentor of ours telling basically forcing me to celebrate myself. And I'm I'm just getting to the point where I can look back at that and say, 
girl, you... Your brand's a big deal. Your brand is a big deal. You were 30 years old. You went five years and didn't make more than three, four, five thousand dollars a month in your business. I mean, excuse me, a year. <laughs> For my first five years of entrepreneurship, I operated as a side hustle. So I was only doing like less than 10,000 a year in my businesses. And I thought that was a big deal because I had my job. I had my stability. This was just my play money. I wasn't operating a legacy at that point. So to go from that to this, there's the celebration. It doesn't have anything to do what was happening on the internet, whether it's a facade or not. I'm not about to denote anyone else's success. We do that a lot. We like to say that it's all smoke and mirrors. And the truth is there are many people out here living the lives that they say that they're living. So don't get it twisted. There are people doing million dollars cold hard cash every month. There are people doing million dollar days and a hundred thousand dollar months and doing major, major, major things. So it's not about de denoting what anybody else is doing, but let's focus on Jalen's evolution how she went from $3,000 to $5,000 in a year to closing a six-figure contract in a day. And that's where I had to kind of learn how to celebrate myself. Celebrate your wins. Celebrate your wins. Let's celebrate some more wins. You know, Absolutely. you've been in this community for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just go off the list. I just want you to start, you know, naming some wins. Give us like 30 to 60 seconds worth of wins. I think the, the biggest win in your community is taking a free masterclass and making a business, creating a business in there. How many of us click on an ad, grab the freebie, grab the workbook, attend the masterclass and leave talking about, oh, I knew all of that already, you know, or, oh, you know, I got something else better to do. So my, my biggest win was creating this business that has been able to evolve. It was incubated in your masterclass. The next thing is the network that I've created. Okay. Being a part of your community put me on the right track. So I don't have the stories that some people have about they had bad coaches and they've been they've made bad investments. I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have had amazing coaches. I'm a part of amazing communities, but it's because when you sow into your coach, you're also sowing into that network. So you had already established a really great network and you opened that, that door for your clients. So I was able to walk right through and get mentors and get community and come to events. Um, so that was amazing. I have a multi-million dollar network, right? So starting a business, multi-million dollar network. I built my first funnel in your community and I'm going to toot my little own horn on this and won a one comma club award <laughs> from ClickFunnels. But literally this is a month or two after starting a business in a free masterclass. So I'm going to celebrate that one comma club because that was built straight off of just talent and what I had learned so far. So if I could do that in two months, what's going to happen, you know, for the foreseeable future? So those are some of my major wins. I have an amazing multi-million dollar network. I have built a powerful brand that is continuing to grow. I'm super confident in my abilities. I'm clear on digital assets. Like I know how to you know, I may not build funnels per se, like a super complex funnels, but you've taught us so much about funneling and reverse engineering and understanding the different elements and things that are required and needed. And you've also recommended the best tools to us. Right. So my tech stack is clear. You know, those are all the things that I can honestly say that some of us go out and go to five different communities and programs to get what I got to get from one place. Thank you. Yes. So what's next for you as we begin to wrap up this episode? Absolutely. So when I started Black Pretty and Paid, my key goal was to create a framework that I am now building upon. And so that framework is called the Wealth Gap Stimulator Model. And I believe that every Black owned business owner should have two arrows, right? One pointing to consumers and the other pointing to businesses. And so I believe we stimulate the economy by stimulating our personal personal economies. And we do that by way of expanding how we're building business. So I have an acquire, a, a, a mindset to acquire, acquire perfectly aligned and high paid clients, acquire contracts and acquire companies. So my vision right now is 
sustain your B2B come out of that so that that can 90% be ran by your team and now build up this B2B arm so this B2C, B2C arm can run more efficiently. You know, just making sure now that we have some traction on this side, now that I have a team, you know, now we're going to begin to acquire, you know, and learn. We're not necessarily making any sudden moves, but you have to get in the world, right, to start to know what to do. So that is what's next for Black, Pretty and Paid is our agency side and our university side thriving. So now that we can um, go out into the world and do more things on the B2B side. I love it. How can people stay connected to you? Yes, you can stay connected to me on Instagram at dare to be a black millionaire. And I am coach Jalen across all platforms on LinkedIn, as well as Facebook. So those are the best ways to stay connected to me. Thank you so much, Jalen Jones, for being here on the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. Wait, we got one more question. Why is your brand a big deal? My brand is a big deal because I said so. So, and when you say something, you have to believe it and then you have to back it up with action. I like to say I am the best and I attract the best. And that's why my brand is a big deal. I love it. 